what's up everybody welcome back to another video from exotic astrology and it's a bright sunny day sunday today and we will finish off with our discussion on the aspects of planets okay we discussed about the aspects of jupiter rahu ketu saturn and now mars along with all the other four planets sun moon mercury venus are remaining i will discuss about mars later but now i want to discuss about sun moon mercury venus okay why at the same time because all these four have only one aspect okay they aspect the seventh house from wherever they are sitting okay so supposedly if sun is sitting in the third house it will aspect which house sixth house right no huh? <laughs> count seven houses from the third house see third fourth fifth sixth seventh eighth ninth okay so seventh from the third is the ninth house okay so basically what are aspects okay before going into the individual planets what 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 actually aspects are present why do every planet aspect the seventh house from there because seventh house in astrology as you know is the house of marriage it is also the house of desire actually remember it is primarily the house of desire confused <laughs> i will tell you it is primarily the house of desire desire means in sanskrit it is called ichha ichha shakti okay now why is it also called the house of marriage because marriage allows you physical union as per scriptures the ancient vedic scriptures physical union between a man and a woman is only allowed after marriage okay that is the ideal scenario the ideal standard and the desire of mating is very strong in individuals in people especially in animals okay so the house of desire is also called the house of sex okay and it is also the house of meeting other people sharing your views etc okay that is why it is called the house of desire and the house of marriage okay because every person from the childhood especially in india they are very much interested oh when will i get married <laughs> either you are a boy or a girl yes everybody is having that fun everybody is having that uh, yes finally and the moment you hear somebody has got married you will be like oh yeah he or she is married now <laughs> so among desires that compel us to take birth again and again and again and again that is the seventh house okay and that is also the house which causes us to stay in this world okay not go to god okay we will discuss about them later but here seventh house from any house represents the desire okay for example it is called the complementary house okay you and your spouse you complement each other okay so wherever sun moon mercury venus are sitting they will try to have a desire on the house opposite to it okay all the other planets also but these four will only try to gain the house which is seventh from them okay and mercury venus are very small planets which are very close to the sun okay so that is why they when they are going around the sun between the sun and the earth no other planet comes in between them okay because there is no other planet between mercury venus and sun sun is here earth is here mercury venus is somewhere here okay so there cannot be any other planet which comes okay so that is why they have only one aspect including moon okay so that means 
wherever they are sitting they will try to see what's going on in the other house for example if venus is in the fourth house okay it has directional strength there and then it will aspect the tenth house saturn also if it is in the tenth house it will aspect the fourth house similarly mercury if mercury is in the fifth house it will aspect the eleventh house okay so now what happens when these planets will aspect what happens well simply it means that the planet as per its natural significations will try to enforce their traits into the other house it simply means that okay and out of these four sun except sun okay moon mercury venus they are considered to be natural benefits moon of course it's a conditional benefit and mercury also but in general they are considered to be natural benefits okay so these three wherever they are aspecting there's a lot of goodness and there's a lot of harmony and beauty okay a lot of happiness a lot of engagement a lot of positivity going on in that house okay for example if mercury venus is in the 10th house okay although it is sitting there in the 10th house but it will also aspect the 4th house so what is mercury venus mercury is friends communication socialization meeting people social events this these are represented by mercury and what does venus represent venus also represents women beauty love and all the things which we like yes luxuries comforts okay vehicles so whenever mercury venus is in the 10th house although that is the house of carrier they will have their own effects there but along with that they will also impact the fourth house okay so which means in your home or in your mother's life mercury venus will have prominence your mother could be a very social person depending on moon and the fourth lord okay and your mother would love to decorate herself to dress herself of course every woman loves loves that but in this case it will be very prominent okay and she can look much more younger than her age okay and she could have lot of friends okay she will be very social in nature okay and because these four including jupiter are natural benefits okay so wherever they are aspecting they will try to benefit that house for example if venus is aspecting saturn okay with its seventh aspect suppose saturn is in the first house and venus is in the seventh house so then venus will aspect saturn right of course saturn will also aspect venus because both of both have to be seven houses apart venus is aspecting okay saturn can aspect venus because saturn has three aspects the third seventh and tenth so if suppose saturn is in the first house and venus is in the third then saturn will aspect venus but venus will not aspect saturn but if they are seven houses apart then both of them have to aspect each other because venus will definitely aspect the seventh house from it itself okay so <clears throat> if venus aspects saturn what happens the person is very creative in his workplace okay the person is very creative with his habits okay the person enjoys what he does okay this is a very important trait because saturn represents habit duty commitment structure discipline so when venus aspects saturn venus tells that i will help you to be happy when you are working i will help you to be disciplined you will love to go to the gym you will love to do things which people may not like and whatever you are doing in like that in life that will become a pleasure activity in in your day to day schedule okay well this can also cause some issues sometime because the person may not do things which he does not like <laughs> that is one problem with this especially if now if what if mercury is aspecting okay if mercury is in the fifth house okay of education it's tremendous it's stupendous it is aspecting the 11th house so the person will also have lot of friends okay or it's excellent for money okay now what if other planets are there in the aspect okay for example if sun is aspecting jupiter okay sun is what power in one word sun represents power strength authority commitment and that 
force inside us which says I am going to do this I'm going to be here irrespective of what others say so suppose Sun is aspecting Jupiter okay suppose Jupiter is in the fourth house and Sun is in the tenth house then they will aspect each other okay so what is Sun Sun is authority power strength okay physical vitality and then it aspects Jupiter and its sun is also the significator of name and fame okay so it also shows that if sun is in the 10th house if it is aspecting 4th house irrespective of any other planets placement in the 4th house the person's home will be very big okay and it is synonymous also because I will tell you because sun in the 10th house is one of the indications of the person being in government services that is not the only indication I am giving a disclaimer here that every there are millions of people who have sun in the 10th house but that does not mean everybody is going to be a politician or an officer in the Indian civil services okay or in the army so and so but that is one of the factors which we consider because sun has directional strength in the 10th house so suppose sun is in the 10th house and especially government officers they have big big bungalows yes they have huge palaces used, uh, palaces in today's world okay like when my father was the collector of a district in Assam the name of the district was Bongaigao and luckily that is also my birthplace <laughs> so Bongaigao district he was there as a collector okay deputy commissioner or a district collector which means for western people he's like the king of the place okay <laughs> he can make any decisions uh, regarding the administration of the state so then he was having a very big palace mansion very big bungalow to stay okay so if sun is in the 10th it will aspect the fourth house that means royalty is coming to your home also okay <laughs> which is obvious if you are in a government service you will have a big house okay and sun in the 10th house is also good for status so in any profession it will give you status which means what you will have a lot of money your home will be very big okay and it will give authority related to that house okay so for example if sun is in the 5th house it is aspecting the 11th house so you will have a habit of putting control over your friends because of your creativity okay because sun is in the 5th house it is aspecting the 11th house so sun is telling from the fifth house i will try to control whatever is going in the 11th house because it is the planet of control that is why sun in the first house or seventh house can lead to issues in marriage okay because sun either it is in the first or seventh it will impact the seventh house okay so you have a tendency to control your spouse to dominate your spouse to lord over her to let her let him or her listen to you which is not very favorable for marriage okay the marriage can be in doldrums eventually if that nature is not controlled basically sun tries to put the ego okay and it can be good in one way for commitment etc because sun represents fixity and stability that which cannot be shaken that depends on the dignity either the good part of sun will come out or the bad part of sun will come out if sun is in a sign like capricorn or aquarius then things can go haywire okay why i am saying because these are signs ruled by Saturn okay and when Sun comes into these signs he feels kind of deficient in himself so suppose for Capricorn ascendant Sun is in the first house then what can happen is it will aspect the seventh house but it is in the sign of Capricorn so Sun when he goes to the sign of Saturn okay Saturn is the labor so the Sun who is the king the power the authority he feels as if there is no value in me <laughs> okay he feels as if people are challenging him all the time even if nobody is challenging he will feel it okay sun in capricorn people sun in aquarius aquarius is much better but especially capricorn then what will happen he will have a feeling of lacking something inside which is an indication of an inferiority complex okay or if suppose sun is sitting with planets like Rahu or Ketu then these issues can come up or even if it is sitting with Saturn so suppose the person is a Capricorn ascendant with Sun in the first house then it is expecting the seventh house of marriage so in that what is going to happen in that because the person is feeling deficient inside okay the ego 
is feeling that it needs recognition of somebody. Okay, why somebody? Because it is the sign of Saturn. And why, what is Saturn? Saturn gets exalted in the sign of Libra. Okay, so when Saturn gets exalted in Libra, what it means? It means that other people, so these people want the validation from others. Okay, and if when Sun is in the first house in Capricorn, aspecting the seventh house, if their spouse is not appreciating what they are doing, then this person will be like, oh, this, this person doesn't love me, you know, he or she doesn't care for me, there's no value in my, in her life for me, you know, I don't have any place. You know. And then this despondency will take another form. Okay, he will be aggressive, he will be very rude, he will be ruthless, he can even abuse the spouse. So these issues can come up if uh, sun is in a bad dignity, okay. But at the same time, it is, if it is in Leo, suppose somebody is a Leo ascendant with sun in the first house, then the person is very stable inside, okay. His ego is contented. He does not need anybody else, okay. So then he will probably not behave like this, okay. <laughs> of course, even if sun is in Leo, if some other planet is aspecting some enemy, then again, things can go haywire. But... I'm just giving a rough interpretation. So similarly, Venus is aspecting Moon. So Moon will also aspect Venus because they will only aspect seven houses each other apart from each other. Okay. So this person may uh, this person may be a very sweet talker. Okay. So Moon emotions is aspecting the planet of love, and the planet of love Venus is aspecting emotions. So love and emotions, see, deadly combination, very sweet combination. Okay. And what if Sun and Venus are aspecting each other or Sun and Mercury are aspecting each other? No, that cannot happen because Mercury-Venus cannot go more than three signs or behind three signs. If they go more than three signs, they will go retrograde. Okay. And if due to some reason they are three signs behind, then they will catch up very fast. Okay. Because they are always orbiting very close around the Sun. They cannot... So, for example, if Sun is in the first house, then Mercury can be either in the first, second, third, or first, twelfth, eleventh house. Okay, it cannot be in the fourth or tenth house. It is not possible. Okay, three houses here, three houses there. Okay. Similarly, if Sun is in the fourth house, then Venus can be in the second house, third house, fourth house, fifth house, or sixth house. It cannot be in the Lagna or in the seventh house. Okay. Of course, in the divisional charts, it can be, okay. So, similarly, if moon is in the fifth house, okay, fifth house of creativity, so the person is extremely creative now, it will aspect the eleventh house. So, then what will happen is, the person will try to present his or her creativity to the friends, okay. And the person will de derive a lot of emotional satisfaction, okay. And... Wherever moon will aspect, that aspect of neediness will come, emotional neediness. So, for example, if moon is in the fifth house, the person can be very creative. But at the same time, if the eleventh house, the friends do not say, oh, you are very creative, this work is very nice, then they may feel, they will not feel bad. But if somebody appreciates they, their, their happiness will be like, it will be like Christmas for them, okay? <laughs> And they will feel very much happy emotionally, okay. Similarly, if uh, Venus is in the first house, it will aspect the seventh house, okay. So, which means Venus is in the first house is one of the indications of a person who is very good looking or whose first impression on others is very good because the Lagna represents the first impression, okay. So, in that case, the spouse, because the seventh house will also be very good looking. Probably, and depending on the dignity of Venus and so many other factors to see looks of, or at least even if she is not good looking, or she is average, but she will be very, uh, she will like to dress and the traits of Venus will be there. Okay, she will like to dress herself, and she will be very popular. Okay, in people, people will like her, they will speak good about her, etc., etc. And especially if a planet like. Mercury, Venus are impacting one house simultaneously, which means if they are sitting in one house and then only they will aspect the seventh house together, right? Then there is a lot of good things in that house, okay? And there is a very famous Saraswati Yoga which is formed if Mercury, Venus and Jupiter 
okay are sitting together or are in mutual aspect to each other okay this person this makes the person extremely creative okay so mercury friends venus love beauty moon emotional satisfaction contentment happiness sun authority post position power name fame recognition okay so that's it from my side if you have any questions queries and comments related to this video then do not hesitate write it down in the comments okay and if you have still not yet subscribed to my channel then i won't say anything <laughs> please subscribe to it as soon as possible and i've made videos on transits of Jupiter, Rahu Ketu, Saturn and joint transit of Jupiter, Saturn. It's known as double transit. It is there in my playlist. Please check it and please share this video with others so that they can understand what is the meaning of aspects, right? And before ending, as I always say, God is there with you all the time. Just look to him and he will be there to give you more of the benefic aspects okay, of Mercury, Venus, Jupiter and Moon. Okay. So until next time, bye-bye. See you.